today marked the second March for Life since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. And of course, that overturned decision was nearly a 50-year struggle in our attempt to try to right the wrong of that 1973 decision. But now, as the March approached and as the 2024 elections are right upon us, there are some political pundits who are recommending that Republicans somehow leave the unborn to speak for themselves. In fact, there are even some so-called pro-life individuals who have argued that if Republicans want to win in 2024, they need to find middle ground on this whole issue of life. What does that even mean? I mean, what is middle ground when you're talking life or death? But anyways, even if there is some sort of political strategy of middle ground on the issue, would that be a winning strategy for this election cycle? Well, joining me now to discuss this is Mary Zock, who is FRC's director of the Center for Human Dignity. Mary, welcome back to the show. Great to have you. Thanks so much for having me on, Jody. Well, it is good to have you. Let's uh, let's start with this. This whole argument of middle ground, we're hearing more and more people say Republicans need to find middle ground. Pro-life uh, need to find middle ground. If you want to win the election, that's where it is. Uh, what is this whole issue of so-called middle ground when it comes to life? Well, this is what we're hearing, and and we're we're seeing that this isn't working. As as you said, you can either kill a baby or you can't. You can you can choose life or you can choose death. There's no middle option. We can't say it's not it's not logically consistent to say sometimes you can kill a baby, but other times you can't. And so we need candidates who are willing to speak the truth. And, and for the last 50 years, Republicans have been strong on this. The, the Republican Party platform talks about protecting life, protecting all unborn life. And, and that's something that we really need to embrace. Well, we really do. And I, I love the way that you uh, state, implore, really, that we need to take into this. We need to lean into this issue like we have been doing for 50 years. It seems like ever since the Roe v. Wade decision took place, everybody's become scared of the issue is now running from it. But you wrote an outstanding article in the Washington Stand where you talk about four ways that Republicans should talk about this whole life issue. And I thought it was just extremely uh, well written and well stated. So let's uh, let's talk about this, Mary. What what are some of the ways that you think we can effectively, and in a winning way, in a way that compels people to agree with us and so forth? What are the ways that we should be talking about this life issue? Well, the first thing that candidates need to do is they need to talk about what they're trying to do. We're not trying to ban something. We're trying to protect someone. And the problem is that we refer to numbers and statistics so often that people forget that the 63 unborn children, 63 million unborn children who have been killed in the United States since abortion was legalized here, each one of them was an individual human being whose name we, someone should know, whose cry a mother should have heard, whose footsteps a father should have helped take. Whose, whose grandparents should have been at their graduation. You know, each one of these is a child and, and it's a gift for that child to be, to be here in the United States. And this is a place where we should celebrate that. So we need to talk about what we're trying to do. The second thing that we need to do is we need to describe who abortion kills. We have a number of abortion survivors. We have Melissa Odin, we have Claire Caldwell, we have Gianna Jensen, and, and these are actual human beings who have lived through the attempts that the abortion industry has made on their lives. Democrats should be forced to face, to literally face the people that they have tried, that their policies have tried to kill. And, and we need to bring those stories home and, and to make them do that. Abortion is a, a gruesome torture, and we can't just let Democrats get away with calling it a choice. We need, to, we need our candidates to be making promises that they can keep. 
They need to say things like, I will defend life to the greatest extent that I possibly can, and then give specifics and, and talk about, you know, the fact that they'll, they'll, they'll demand that legislation that's already on the books protecting the unborn be enforced. And then finally, we need to talk about moms. Every abortion takes an unborn child's life and every abortion hurts a mother, sometimes physically, sometimes mentally, and always spiritually. And these sto the stories of these women who have been harmed by the abortion industry are real and powerful. There are girls who delivered their unborn child into the toilet thinking that it was just going to be a clump of cells because that's what the woman at Planned Parenthood told them. We need to tell those stories. And we need to tell the stories of the women who were pressured by their boyfriend, by their by their boss, by their by their partner, by by their parents to abort their child and the trauma that they have lived through. These individual stories change hearts, and that's what we need to do. I couldn't agree with you more, Mary. We've got about a minute or so left. Real quickly, debunk for us, if you will, this whole myth that the Democrats continue to parrot and put forward that when laws uh, are there in place to protect unborn babies, somehow women die because of these laws. Well, and that's the favorite talking point of the Democrat Party right now is that when an unborn child is protected, a woman will die. And they have brought forth countless examples to try to make Americans believe that. But the reality is an, an abortion is the intentional taking of an unborn child's life. There are really tragic situations where when we treat mothers, an unborn child tragically dies, but everyone is devastated in those instances. When an abortionist performs an abortion and a child lives, they call it a failed abortion. No one is devastated right. at that. And, and so we need to be driving home. It's not an abortion if you're trying to save a mother's life. Mary Zock, thank you so much for joining us today on Washington Watch. We appreciate it. And listen, I encourage everyone to check out her article on the uh, Washington stand on this issue. Mary, again, thank you for joining us.